grand rising good day and good night i hope you all are doing well welcome to my channel welcome to 144 from the stars tarot all right let's give odin what he is waiting for with his peaceful beautiful little eyes look at him so sweet and kind there you go bud all right so i mentioned in a reading i posted a couple days ago that i had a song stuck in my head now i knew this song being stuck in my head was a download for the collective but i sat on this for a few days because i knew the message was profound and i'm still honestly trying to really understand um what exactly it means by this the song that was stuck in my head for a while is starman by david bowie and what i am understanding of the lyrics that i am pulling from is the lyric is there's a star man waiting up above he'd like to come and meet us but he thinks he'd blow our minds and what i'm getting is like there are beings that are ready to reveal themselves and I just now in this moment got reminded of a message that I forgot I channeled a long time ago where I said something about there was already a preset time release for some kind of announcement or some kind of reveal. Um, I am getting that there's a lot of information and light and frequencies coming through. I know that the Pleiadians are working very closely to that aspect. Um, I'm not sure if what this message is trying to tell me is that people in the collective are about to experience a like grand revelation of your star people or galactic beings. It really kind of seems like beings of the stars in the heavens are ready to reveal themselves. What I don't fully understand yet is, are they about to reveal themselves globally across the world as like some big event? Or is it going to start by revealing it to like pockets within the collective that their minds are more readily receptive to that kind of interaction and communication and then let that seed kind of grow and plant in the collective mind so that way when the big grand reveal comes through, which I kind of feel like they've been doing that for a while anyways, but it seems like we're getting to a big step up from what we have previously been experiencing and i really do I, i'm sensing like face to face like actual live contact like this this message is really telling me that there are beings that are ready and are willing and wanting to reveal themselves to man on earth so i'm going to leave that download alone for now we are going to go ahead and um pull some oracle and we'll see what other messages spirit would like you all to know wow okay all three of these came out at the same time we have building blocks 28 and then we have co-create and then we have message in a bottle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Many of you are the building blocks of the co-creation itself. Like, just you being here is a building block for what is being created. That is really beautiful. I love that. Many of you are very in tune with spirit and the animal kingdom and nature and life itself. I see that... There's a lot of good works being done through you. I feel like a lot of these works might even be going on without your knowing. Like it's like a, a unconscious occurrence. You're not even consciously doing it. Just your beingness, being present, is enough for the effect to occur. And it has to do with the energy that you carry. Very powerful frequencies reside within you. That are very beneficial to the planet and the people around you right now. Yeah, I really, I'm getting this so strong that for some of you, like, there are, like, star, galactic ancestors that are ready to, come like, reveal themselves to you on a next level. Like, they really want to communicate with you. I feel like it is, like, I'm, I just, I keep feeling like it's time. It's time. We're ready. It's time for us to step through. It's time for us to 
to rise, to unite, to like join this galactic celebration, this reunion, because we have successfully um, allowed a lot of false walls, false structures, false lights to effectively be revealed and destroyed. And now we are ready to step in and build the new. Oh, wow. Okay. So I, I'm guessing right now it's probably more so of like an individualistic um, contact experience. And there may even by, be like pockets around the world, like I said earlier, within the collective that may experience these um, interactions or these visits or these encounters or these communications but I feel like it's building up to a much bigger, more grand reveal. Um, there has been a recent massive like reset and activation. And I do feel that a lot of that activation I had mentioned in a live had to do with our crown chakra. And I am seeing in this reading that that activation is allowing us to more readily, more easily, more clearly receive and have a more deep understanding of the information that we are receiving and just have a more deep knowing that we understand the light that we are receiving from I'm, I'm really getting there's like there's ships there's there's all sorts of stuff going on like I, I could do a whole reading or that wouldn't even be a reading it would just be a video on all the ways that this light is being transmitted or communicated and received a lot of it is telepathic as well. I feel like there are strong telepathic connections being made right now. And it's important. For many of you, you are voices of your people, of your, of your ancestry. You're like a, a representation of your soul tribe. Like you're the elected official. And it's time for you to awaken and rise in your authority and power. And with that comes the wisdom and the knowledge of your ancestry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, what are, what are all these building blocks and this co-creation and this message in a bottle? What is all this? What is it letting us know? That we are entering, we are building, we are creating the land of milk and honey. This is what we are headed towards. This is what we are creating. We have effectively dismantled what the old. And it's time. It's time for a more unified co-creation. With all of us. With the divine. With angels. With the universe. With our ancestors. With other galaxies with other star beings like it's time for us to really fully unite and come together and create a better world the world we were promised wow okay i'm getting like phoenix rising from the ashes real strong happening like in the material world, like the, the world itself is the phoenix rising from the ashes, but, you know, as above, so below, and as within, as without as well. So it's not just the, um, the world itself, it's also the people, you guys, it's the collective, it's the individuals. We are the phoenix rising through the ashes right now. Yeah, look at that. And there's, look at all that fire and all those flames. Community. It's like the whole community of us are rising from the ashes. Wow. It's like um, we've ignited some kind of portal for our ancestry to come through. And many of you are this portal. You are a portal for your ancestors to be here now. In you, through you. There's that white tiger, that personal power. Yeah, we have this retreat and we have change. But I'm kind of getting a different energy with this retreat. This retreat is what we are building. This is what we are co-creating. 
We are creating a retreat on earth, a sanctuary, a safe haven, a like a hub. We're restoring earth realm back to what it used to be or what it could be or what it always was. We just weren't living in the dimension or realm to experience it in that way. This is interesting. I'm also kind of getting the energy of like, this is going to change the biology on the planet. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with crystallization. Which is interesting because we hear about crystallizing of DNA all the time and how that's going to change us and how that's going to affect us and us being like human, right? But what about the rest of the life on Earth? What about how's that going to change the nature, the animals, the plants? Something very magical is being restored. It's like, oh, yeah, we... There was a time where all of us were so deeply connected and in tune with what we would now probably call magic or something, but it was love. It was Gaia. It was the stars. We're bringing that back. And I mean, you can even kind of see in this change card, he's got a pretty powerful aura around him. Like he's emanating light language itself. Right underneath that we have this boundaries card. But I'm more so getting this energy of climbing the ladder over these false structures and institutions. So that we can treat, we can see the true vision and path. That tree slip, that Freudian slip, that was not an accident. We're talking about the, the tree of life here. We're coming into God's kingdom. We're climbing out of the illusion. Yeah. Because the world has taken a, a time of reflection. I feel like this is a big like global energy. Big collective energy. The collective has taken time to reflect. And that's why the collective who has taken this time to reflect. Tap back into that that primordial energy within ourselves as well. Tapping back into earth, to the animal kingdom, to the animal spirits. Remembering they are a part of us. They are us. We are them. Mm. A unification of breath and waters. Compassion, exactly. What is after this reflection? What did, what change did we decide after we took this mass reflection on a big scale? We decided to arise as the lotus from the mud with love and compassion for ourselves and our brothers and our sisters and our family. And we decided to be the change. And we're creating a sanctuary on earth. And I really do feel like it's, it's time. It's time for us to reconnect with our people. I just heard Dogon tribe. That could be a synchronicity for someone listening to this right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sound. Some of you guys are channeling your ancestors in your music or your writing or your art. You're channeling your star family. Some of you, um, when you are like humming or praying, like it's, and that's why I combine those words, because it's like you're expressing yourself with just like vocal sounds, but you're not really using many consonants, or um, you may just kind of feel like you're just free form humming or singing and expressing yourself. That's actually a form of light language, and the divine loves hearing it. Your ancestors, the angels, you have a beautiful voice. Whoever that was for, yeah, absolutely, they love it. And it, it really carries a strong vibration. And that reminds me of something that is an interesting phenomenon. I don't know if you've ever just prayed regularly and then prayed with song. And then felt the power of singing a prayer. It's, it's, it adds another like dimension, a dimensional depth to it because, and I think it just has to do with the vibration, the sound, and then you putting your heart into it. And then it's just this heart brain coherence with your voice and you're truly in alignment and expressing back to source. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a really pretty energy. It's like, it's natural, it's raw, it's peaceful, it's restorative, and it's... It's cleansing, but like I had a heart. I stopped when I wanted to say that word because it's like the cleansing is already. This is like after the cleanse. That's why the first card out here addressed all that fire energy I felt. This communal rebirth from the flames. And then right after that, we have this retreat. This like crystallized cornucopia of love and life restored back on earth. Yeah, there's that white tiger again. Needed to come back out. Absolutely. Fierce energy. Also, I kind of feel like this is um, a new form that a spirit or energy that many of you work with very closely. This is the form that it's taking on right now, this white tiger. It is fierce. It is pure. It wears its stripes. It stands true in its identity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of like powerful energy from that. Many of you are tapping into this source of ancient primordial power. And you're harnessing it. You're bringing it from its raw true form and you're igniting it with your blue flame of truth and love. And you're harnessing that light and transmuting it into your own form, your own armor, your own unique... Ex oh, it's so pretty. Creation is such a beautiful, miraculous thing. Mm-hmm. Wow. Something about a supernova. I don't know what that means for someone. I don't know why that needed to come through. It just... It was like the... The information just kept trying to push its way through me, and I just kept sitting on it. But I'm like, I don't see the... Wh why are you asking me to say that? But for someone, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. So whatever was wanting that message to come out will uh, let me live. Transformation. There's that phoenix energy I was telling you about. Now, what happens after this phoenix, this transformation, when we rise from the ashes and we become crystalline? Because if you could... And one way to look at this, rising from the ashes could be rising from the carbon-based DNA. Right? Because what is ash? It's carbon. That's when we have our freedom. Right? That's when we're balanced and integrated and whole within our being. We have balanced our light and dark. Right? And it became our personal power. See, here it's like almost two separate things. Right? But in here we wear it as one. That's our power. That's our strength. You are the light and the dark within you. Yeah, there's that animal kingdom, that big bear energy. I love this. I feel like, you know, yeah, that's that tapping in back to that sacred medicine. We used to work with this all the time. That's shaman energy right there. Some of you got some kind of DNA activation that are giving you shamanistic gifts and abilities. These are gifts from your ancestors. These are gifts that you have previously used in other incarnations and is being restored. It's being brought live into your, um, I, I almost said like DNA, Akashic blueprint, and that wasn't the word I was trying to say. Wow. Wow. Someone is very connected with life, like nature, spirit, animal spirits, Gaia. It's like you're a vessel. Oh, that's like true shaman energy. Oh, yeah. We talking to like, I'm talking to a real shaman out there right now. Because it's like you're a physical man vessel of Gaia's medicine. I don't know if that made sense. It's like you the that sacred medicine of earth. You embody all of that within you. 
You hold a lot of power. And you can you can do so much good with that. Some of you may be learning like that you have these gifts and they may be kind of new to you. And you may even know that like your calling is to be that or do that in some kind of way. And you may be trying to figure out how to make this your calling or make this your purpose. Just start small from the heart and the divine will lead you the rest of the way. Just have it in your heart to be of service and of love and just heal one heart at a time and your path will be illuminated and revealed before you. Wow. Okay. I feel like I just channeled someone's ancestor. Yeah. You will be like well taken care of. Like don't don't worry. Just be patient with yourself and know that this is your path. Yeah. Affirmations. Okay. Many of you have been working on affirmations confirmed with this communication card. Many of you are being um encouraged to use positive affirmations right now your voice is very powerful we saw that sound energy come out earlier and i had already said that you guys are like a voice for your ancestors you you guys are very powerful so again be very careful how you complete sentences that begin with i or i am or i feel or i whatever if it starts with i be careful how it, what follows mhm mm yes Align yourself to the truth. Don't deny it. You are ready. You've trained for this for lifetimes. Fall into my arms, surrender, holding the opposites, extremes of life, forge, don't follow, pave a new path, be the leader you wish you had. Now, if that isn't the strongest call to pick up your torch and be a way shower, to have the faith, take the leap of faith, you are the path. Some of you might not be seeing the path because you're not seeing yourself. <laughs> And that was another way for me to say, you are the path you're seeking. You're here to make that path. That's why you don't see it around you. There isn't one. You're the one that's about to make that path. That's what you came here to do. Trust in yourself. Wow. Some of you, I'm going to be honest, you may have a hard time kind of like on the 3d and the human aspect of this experience like trying to like reach out and f like for like if you're in the beginning stages of this or like you're just now realizing this is your calling this is your purpose this is your path and you're like trying to figure out well how do i like how do i even get started like what do i how do like and you're probably gonna have a really hard time getting any reaching anyone communicating with anyone that's gonna have um the advice that you're feeling in your heart or soul that you're seeking and the reason being is you're doing something a unique way that's never been done before so you may be able to get um useful advice from others but i'm, I'm really kind of getting that this is something you're just gonna have to take the leap of faith and trust yourself and make your own way you're going to have to forge a path. You're going to have to know that you are the path. You were selected. You were chosen for this. You hold a lot within you. I see that in the astral realms, whether you remember this or not, because some of you, this could be in, um, like in your dream state. But for others of you, I see you may even be doing this in like meditations. Um, but there's like a crystal cove that you visit that has very high vibrational energies and it really helps you connect to Gaia it helps you connect with source it helps you connect with spirit 
It helps you recharge. And it's like you're always there in that place. That's interesting. It reminds me of like, um, I don't, not everyone will be able to relate to this, but those of you that have watched anime, you would be able to understand this. Um, creating like a shadow clone of yourself and the shadow clone is doing all the meditation to gather energy while the main version of you is maintaining the fight. But meanwhile, that other clone of you is sitting there gathering energy, gathering energy, gathering energy. That's kind of what's going on right here. Like you have another uh, another like spark of your soul that exists in another realm. And in this realm, it's pretty much like the entire time that that spark is there. Its whole purpose is to sit there and connect and recharge and be like a, a battery for you, be a, a bridge, a channel. And that part of you is always there in that crystal cove. It's always there. It's always in the water. It's always around the crystals. It's always around the spirit, around life, around source. For some of you, this could be a crystal cove that's like in the center of the earth. Like I'm getting kind of like Lemurian cove kind of vibes. For others of you, this could be a place that does not really exist here. Here, right? No separation and whatever. But yeah. Exists in another realm, in another space that your soul knows very well. I'm kind of getting that. For those of you that are resonating with this, I'm getting that one of the effects of that reset that we just had and this crown chakra activation is you are now always linked to that part of your I am. And that's going to give you a source of a lot of power. A lot of raw channel, a lot of love, a lot of life, a lot of light. And this is going to help you on your mission. Because on Earth realm right now, you know, I mean, yes, we have nature. Yes, we have elements. Yes, but I mean, hell, what if you live in the city or something? Like, what if you live in an area that's not really the easiest place to find a quiet place to ground? Like, not everyone has that. But you know what a lot of you do have? A part of you that exists in a realm that's... Mm, like chef's kiss it's perfect it's a dream a place anyone would want to go to this is like a mythological place you would hear about where you could go in and bathe in the waters and it would cure and heal all illnesses and wounds or whatever it's that kind of magical place that's what you're tapped into that's what you're tapping it back into some of you guys have already had this connection it just um didn't always feel this live this like overlapping yourself if that makes sense like it's like the two worlds are really kind of merging into one so there, i'm reading for a lot of people that are on different stages of this kind of path but we're all part of this collective spiral you are not alone isolation physical connection community even though you may feel alone here, you're not. And what I'm really getting with this, it, it with this card, is that for some of you, you have, and you, you would know, like, if this part, like, brings a little warmth or a little zing to your heart or something, then, yeah, that I'm talking to you. Um, but it, it seems like you have, for some of you, it, it's funny. It, it, this reminds me of another message I had where it was like, some of you guys are currently incarnated in this vessel, but you didn't come directly from the spirit realm. You came from a piece of technology that allowed you to incarnate in this realm, and you're actually still alive in another body on a ship somewhere. Okay, so I've mentioned that before. This isn't the exact message that I'm getting in this, but what I am kind of getting is for some of you, you have yourself in ships posted up nearby. Yourself, your own self is posted up in ships nearby. And that's kind of trippy as hell. And that makes me really wonder, like, damn, are we really in a simulated experience then? For me to get that kind of message. And, you know, the funny thing is there's so many star seeds or beings or individuals that are incarnated on Earth right now that came from completely different universes. Like, there's, a, there's people that are incarnated in this realm that came from a universe where that truth is the truth. But there's individuals that incarnated in this universe that reside in a harmonic... But we're all... It's... Look, 
the quantum universe is crazy, okay? It's mind-boggling. Anything's really possible. All right. Now, for others of you, it is your ancestors, it is your your family, your brothers, your sisters, your star fam, your tribe. For some of you, it is like your, uh, how do I say this? Your council. Yeah, I guess I could say that. Your council, your council of your people. They're just right outside, right out, right up in orbit. Like they they right there. They ain't anywhere. They're right there with you. You might feel alone, but you're not. They're learning a lot through you, too. And that's that's the beautiful thing. Like, if you feel like your experience was hard or if you feel like you're alone, like, take take a moment to just ponder the idea. You don't have to believe it's true for you, but, like, hey, humor me for a second. What if all those difficult experiences you're going through, you have star family, you have ancestors, you have other beings, you have unborn souls that are ready to incarnate that are learning right now through your hardships. They're learning through you. They are grateful for what you came here and experienced and overcame and did because they learned so much through you doing it and it's going to help them. Like You have no idea how much it helps them. If you are familiar with the term imprinting before incarnation, it's similar to that phenomenon. You, if some of you guys are like the, the trendsetters to the blueprint of other souls that are coming to incarnate with your info. Like, you're the first to do this. That's what I'm trying to say. And there's so many, like, excited that you did this. Even your pain, even your hurt, like, it was for good. It served a good. It did. So much love, so much appreciation, so much gratitude for your purpose, for your journey, for your path, for your pain, for your suffering, for your tribulations, everything you endured, everything you overcame, what you felt, what you saw, what you heard. They were there. They were there. They were feeling it with you. They were experiencing it through you. They were learning because of you. They were healing because of you. Our life really isn't ours sometimes. Those that really walk a divine spiritual path, you would know. Some of you may even feel like you sometimes got other forces that are residing in your body. Yeah. I'm sorry. Defenselessness. Right past wrongs. Uprooting. You have cleansed so much. And I'm also kind of getting an energy of like, for some of you, you have ancestors that are like, so it, it's, it's, it's such a, it's, it's tears of joy, of gratitude, but it's also like, it's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, like, thank you, thank you, I love you, I'm so appreciative, like, I can't, I can't express the love and the gratitude and appreciation so much, but at the same, on the same coin, I am so sorry. I am so sorry you had to work through all of that. I am so sorry that you had to take on those karmas, those pains, those lessons. But I am so grateful that you did. You have freed me. You have healed me. You have liberated me. You have given me hope. Like, I, I don't think people really understand how connected we are to spirit and how spirit is so interconnected with us and our lives and how profound each and every step, word, breath you take is effective. It's profound. It changes the world. And when you take that, when you become aware of that, and then you move through life with that intentional purpose, your life opens up to a whole new realm of possibilities. A whole new level of abundance, of gifts, of blessings, of, of love, of experience, of connection, of interaction, of learning, of receiving and giving. We have to wake up to our interdimensional self. So yes, I, I, I feel that strong. Some of you have ancestors that are so sorry you went through what you went through. They're sorry that you took on the, you know, people like to say curses or whatever, patterns, karma, whatever label you want to use. We're talking about the same thing, right? You cleared that energy. 
and you liberated them. And they're sorry that because I'm gonna be honest with you, some of the some of the sorry is taken with accountability that they understand it's their fault. Because when they came here before you and walked their walk and talked their talk, you know, they they may not have done everything the way that was according to plan or in alignment with the best. And you know, hindsight's twenty twenty when you're in spirit realm. But they are so grateful that when you came after them, and they're sorry, they, they they wish they could have, you know, like, I mean, imagine you're a parent and you witness your child overcome a difficulty that they really never should have had to go through. And it's if you're going to be honest with yourself, it's your fault that that child had to go through that. But you're so proud of them for doing it. And you're thankful too. You're like, I'm so glad you're the one to do this. And I'm sorry that I didn't do enough work on myself to where you had to pick up the leftovers. But I'm grateful that you you ate that shit humbly. You know? Gratefully. Like, I, I'm, I'm honored to be your ancestor is the energy I'm getting. Like, they're grateful for you being here. So grateful. And it's there's a huge blessing that's coming from this. Huge blessing. And maybe that's part of why I feel like at the beginning of this reading, I said, you know, there's a, a star man who wants to, to meet us, to reveal himself, and he thinks we'll blow our minds. A little hesitant, but really wants to cross that threshold. And maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's because of the gratitude. Maybe there's so much appreciation of your growth, of your work, of your accomplishments of your pain, of your suffering, of everything you've been through, your experience, you as an individual, your human experience, your entire life. Don't shorten any of that shit. Don't cut anything out. Let's not sugarcoat it. Even the ugly and the nasty of it. Appreciation and gratitude. Because your life did so much more living than just your life. Wow. All right. I am going to go ahead and leave this reading here. If you like the way that I read, please be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. I greatly appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you on the next collective message.